Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Phantoms VR podcast. I am joined today by the lovely above me, Desi, uh, to my top right, Nuck, and right next to me, Shiva. Uh, today, we're going to be talking a bit about just like Pop 1 and general VR stuff. The first 30 minutes will be just around Pop 1 and everything we got on that today, and the rest of it will be chat motivated, I guess we could say. Alrighty. So hat change like a professional hat change. <laughs> Gotta get the beanie going. Minimum three. Gotta get the Des for episode. Desi Fox. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the, you know, branding Desi Fox. The on Desi the hat. Fox beanie. The Desi Fox beanie. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, first thing to start off here. I play for you, man. That <laughs> makes me sponsored. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh was brought to our attention from Shiva that the VRML Discord has a Pop One discussion channel now, and that's huge. That's a big thing. <laughs> I mean, it's just a like a talk, like a general talk, like chat channel. But I mean, we've also got private lobbies going into the beta tomorrow. So mm. open beta, it's for everyone, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's so that's looking good for some third party organizations to start organizing either tournaments or leagues and uh, mm -hmm. uh because i know we've had like the you know these like small things within big box uh just like in-game prizes like i've got that white hattie skin um that was basically the last time i was really playing pop one mm. i played a little bit more recently but there, there's so many new additions uh that it was kind of throwing me for a loop for a little bit but we still we still caused some damage the other day when we all started playing together so <laughs> uh, yeah. not too not yeah. too rusty mm. I'm rocking that uh that battle pass brood armor, loving it, styling. Everybody can see me though, so like that makes the game yeah. more challenging. Yeah, <laughs> that bullet magnet, you mean? With that yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm the shiniest thing in the game. Like even when I'm climbing the red sign, like it doesn't matter. I'm just shining. <laughs> yeah. so you'll be the aggro player, and I'm the one in the camo hiding in the trees. <laughs> <Just trying laughs> yeah. to people. I mean, exactly. they both. <laughs> I was like, because if we were gonna see some kind of competitive scene happen, I like, I don't think we'd see a lot of people hot dropping like we do in just normal lobbies. Like everybody just oh, yeah. immediately fighting. Yeah. Like I, for one, like I would, I because like I would normally play where I would pot out, get as far away from everybody as possible because there wasn't really a lot of reward to drop first thing because there, there's great loot all across the map. So there, there's mm -hmm. nothing really pushing people to, to drop immediately and start killing each other other than to just get kills, which, I mean, gets you stats and gets you more points within, like, the normal big, bop, big box pop one season. But if there was going to be some kind of league or tournament set up by some other entity, uh, what what would be the incentive to hot drop? Well, I feel like a good start with hot dropping, considering if, points, if kills do give you points in the league or however they want to run it, if kills do give you an incentive lead on the leaderboard... If you're better at early game PvP than late game PvP, it might be better for you to hot drop and fight those people early on if you know you can just pick up a gun, laser someone down, and get those points early on. Might just be a better strat in the long game. So yeah, my kills are more important though. Right. My opinion on it though is if it runs like any other VR battle royale tournament style. Or not VR battle royale, but battle royale tournament style, such as like PUBG, um, old school H one Z one tournaments, things like that. What you're going to see is that kills are going to matter for something. The, the, your kill amount is going to get you points. Um, and then your wins are going to get you a certain amount of points. Um, the, rather than it just be based off of how many wins you're getting or how many kills, you're going to see a mixture of both with the wins being like astronomically more points than it, per kill. Yeah, um, it has to be a, a mix between kill, damage, and wins. Right. Well, I don't know if they're going to get points based on damage so much as the, yeah. the final it, blows. It shows because you, you have little data from kills between right. team people in the same lobby and and wins. So you need right. something to 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 balance the 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 points. Only issue with oh, that absolutely. would be like the then big box have to provide like a way for someone to actually check everyone's damages that map then they have to report their damage well that. that's that's what that's what so the vrml um generally in most games what they do is 
they either have to have one member of the team recording, or at the end of every match, you need a screenshot of each, <laughs> um, like the the ending scoreboard. Um, and then you would sum- then it would be up to the captains to submit those themselves. Um, games like Pavlov do it. Um, I don't. I think Onward might do something similar to that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, where you, you you submit your scores. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, you just these games are submit your score. scores. Bo- bo- both teams had to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is kind of the same thing that we see in Snapshot because I know Nuggle and Shiva the VRML as far as like mostly it's snapshot um so i mean i know nuggle and echo too but um so it's similar to that but you have to actually send in the screenshots and everything with games like have off stuff i so, actually just left my echo team <laughs> oh, so, yeah <laughs> um, but so that's what you're gonna that's what we're gonna be seeing a lot of i think and as far as the hot dropping goes so i think what you'll see is players that are currently on the kill leaderboard super high up they're going to be the ones that are going to hot. Um, and they'll use that because maybe they're not getting so many wins, but they can make up all their points with their kills. Yeah. Um, so hot dropping, I think, is still going to be a tactic used. It's definitely going to be widely used at the beginning, and then as players realize that it sucks on um, point-wise, because it is going to suck point-wise if you can't clutch those hot drops. Um, I think then we're going to see a decline in the hot drops and then doing, as Shiva said, which is going out gearing up surviving getting ready for the final fight yeah i think we'll start to see a dramatic drop off in hot dropping because it but it all depends again on the point system and how they set it up but i would like to see more big battles just happen in those last Mm -hmm. two three zones with all six teams still alive and then battling out in that tiny area Um, that would be fun I, I, casters I think would, would have a day and a half more. trying to cast that though <laughs> oh well true but, but it's more i think it's more watchable because it, you see more uh content happening in a smaller area so even if they're trying to like you know call things out maybe they just sit back and watch with everybody else because there's just so much going on you know call out the important kills and the squad wipes but um i, I think that would be more watchable and because the games go so quick usually it's like a 10 15 minute game for all yeah. 16 to go in and finish so i think there's a lot of potential there for for casting and i hope big box will have some kind of casting or spectator feature yeah, i know uh, mm-hmm. when you die like there's there's a they already have like a great one for when you're dead and you can like watch uh the map like you're a giant and you see everybody like, a action figure kind of um yeah. that would be a cool camera to have yeah just like pavlov spectator yeah and so I think another thing we're going to see too, and not to bring up last week's topic, but just like full circle here, a huge boom in VR esports when Pop One hits um, in competitively because it is like what I, th- I I really think it is the biggest multiplayer game in VR right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to see organizations pop up other than like Phantoms and you know other organizations and other games like arctic things like that um you're gonna we're gonna see a huge boom in that and then that's when sponsors are gonna start getting involved they're gonna see all of this and it's pop one can actually make the vr esports scene blow up i think so too that's it's, it's one of those games it's one of those top selling games that we know of they have exactly. 10 million dollars in revenue right i mm-hmm. mean that's that's something that uh, that's one statistic that we at least found but uh, when yeah, I'm just looking at YouTube, like it's what people are watching when they associate games with VR. Like the the very first video when I type in Pop One, it's got 137 thousand views. I'm trying to yeah, find any yeah. other VR game that has that kind of uh, pull with people. Um, there's well, it's there's also not so much. similar to battle royales that people play on PC for Fortnite. People call it the VR of Fortnite. Is the main reason probably why it got so popular because it did get picked up by algorithms as oh, people are interested in this, oh, it's really close to this, so yeah, they kind of just went from there. Or night in VR. Yeah. That's the, the tag, how you use tags in, in YouTube. And yeah. this is something we mentioned it in, the, in the last podcast, that people understand the game and it's something familiar to them. So mm-hmm. it's something you can port from flat to, to VR and, and make people watch. Yeah. Well, and it's also just one of those games that when if someone has a quest too and they show their buddy, oh hey, 
here's this game called Pop One on this quest too. Oh, he can go out, spend less than four hundred dollars, and start playing. Like that. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. You, that's how you grow this because nobody's. I mean, well, not nobody, but not as many people are going to go out and buy a two thousand dollar gaming PC plus another thousand dollars for an index to maybe play Pop One or Onward or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the barrier to entry is so much smaller. This is a yeah. game where you you can make big plays and outplay the the enemy players. So this is something fun fun to watch and something you can stream and and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're gonna have some fun streaming it. I can't wait. One of the things I can't wait for, and I knew that Pop One was eventually the VRML was gonna sink their teeth into it, and I knew it, and I was waiting for it. And I've been saying it for months now. Um, Your profit so, doesn't yeah, Exactly. Like, I know esports, that, that might be a thing as far as VR esports. But, anyways, so um, the one thing I'm looking forward to is actually seeing huge rivalries form between teams. Yeah. Um, and you see, you know, the top players come down to it and like butt heads in the final circle. Like, it's going to be a big deal. There's going to be a lot of high stake games with this. Um, there's going to be a lot of yeah. high tension games, um, and not to be that guy, Trent, I love you, man, but there is a large toxic community in, in uh, population <laughs> plus, so you're going to see some crap get tossed, and that's what I'm waiting for, man. <laughs> that's what the viewers are waiting for, apparently, too. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> well, it's like, well, what do we think a league will look like, though? Because, I mean, it's it, it's going to be hard to schedule... 18 people once a week mm. to try to play so it'll what, what probably be monthly tournaments. tournaments monthly tournaments yeah i i would i would think that they they instead of running it weekly like they normally do with every other league that the smart at least the smart move to me um would be for them to go ahead and schedule it like they do challenger cups and championship series mm-hmm. yeah same here yeah um that would be the best way to do it and you do it once a month well, yeah, and, and like Snapshot has pulled off tournaments where they just played in the day. Uh, there's been yeah, two exactly. official ones, uh, the Viport Open, Steam Open, and then even player uh, supported tournaments, the Virtual X Ball League. Like they just they pick a day and they get at least 20 people to show up and they play it in a few hours. And yeah, I think that, exactly. that would that'd be pretty that'd be pretty easy to do once a month and then form the league from that. So VRML, if you're listening, <laughs> we've we've got it set up right. for you. <laughs> yeah, so, um... You have your mods here. Yeah, yeah the like, mods, yeah. hey, Jason, I'll be, I'll be messaging you in a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I think that would be the smartest move. Um, and then a season at, at that point, a season could last literally a year. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing a single tournament a month, and then like do like, you know, in January is when really things start picking back up because Christmas time the league takes off and whatnot. So you do every January a small championship series between the top teams. And you'll see the I think you'll see this competitive league grow probably beyond the size that Echo is. Oh wow. I mean because yeah, this is the game to beat. Yeah, that is the like, game to beat. Echo with over like I don't know how many teams now. I'll check on that. But think about it, population one's already a bigger no, they're over 300. Teams, yeah, they're over, the like, yeah. But think about it, population one. Pop one is the most popular multiplayer game out right now. Um, Best selling. Everybody has it. Everybody's got to play it. Everybody's going to make a team. You really think a season would last a whole year, though? I, I think they're going to have uh, some It'd kind of break. Like maybe six months. months, realistically. Probably be six months, realistically, but... Um, I'm saying like they could if they wanted to do a season a year because you're already taking breaks in between each month for each tournament. You don't need to have an off season really. I want to say maybe about 300 to 400 active teams in the Echo League. In Echo, yeah, yeah, it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere on the there because uh, what's what? The team size for Echo? Uh, it's a four players, with and I think you're allowed up it's to like two four, sides. Yeah, it's four, four players player on matches. field, six people, six people okay. team, four players on field. Yeah, got it. 
That's a lot of people. Yeah. yeah Echo Echo is and... probably one of the is it's definitely the biggest VRML game out there, but I don't know. I feel I definitely feel Pop One could overtake it in the future. So Pop mm-hmm. One would be three man teams on field. Um, probably allowing for two subs, so you're looking at five man squads. Um, three man team, five man squad. I could see that easily, easily um, overtaking Echo as far as the size. Um, I also think that you have to take into account that this is a paid game and Echo is free. So, yeah, that's also right, but we're a huge twenty thousand active players. Twenty thousand active players is what I'm looking. Well, that's, um, well, that's yeah. just what I've seen. Like, I checked my leaderboard, and, like, I had one win this week because I've hardly played, and I was in the top 20,000. But you know there's got to be at least twice as many players that just haven't played or at least haven't right. won the game that week. Because the whole – the other point to it, too, is that, I mean, on the Quest 2 boxes, like, you got Pop 1 right there. Mm-hmm. Um, Pop 1 commercials. You've got Pop 1 all over Facebook in the like yeah. uh, targeted ads mm-hmm. like pop one all over youtube like everybody's getting the game well, yeah it's software that sells it. the hardware i mean you're not just going to buy a headset just and, you know to not do right it. And, the, and the other view the other viewpoint that i'm taking from this is a lot of these people are coming over from console and um they're used to like paying 60 dollars a game so they see that this game's 20 bucks and they go nuts yeah. I think it's thirty bucks. Yeah, actually. I think it's thirty. But one I other thing I wanted to bring up is oh. the same. Well, yeah, no. like even thirty bucks is like still, yeah. still half. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. if if it is monthly tournaments, though, I feel like they're definitely more of a player base because they won't have to commit to weekly practices, weekly games, and stuff like that. So other VRML players already play one or two games could be like, oh. I only have to dedicate one day a month to playing this. I like Pop One. I play it casually, and then you will have those people that play it competitively mm-hmm. and play and just for that day of the month. So I feel like there'll be a right. different big mix of teams being like, "Oh, we can play this on the side as our chill game, still play ranked with it and have a good time, and then we can play our main games weekly competitively." So that's where now, I definitely think yeah, the player base point. will come from. Mm-hmm. The other, the other way the VRML could go with it too, which would also work is running their seasons adjacent to Pop 1's Battle Pass season. Well, what, what do you mean? Like, so they would run essentially at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, it wouldn't hurt, but I'm not sure how much it would really help. So, so I, I, I mean, like, Big Box and the VRML are going to be working closely together on this so i could see big box doing something purposefully just to promote like, urml mm. yeah yeah <laughs> actually do you, do you guys know that there is a confi- confirmed tournament for end of season one in top one yeah that's probably going to be sponsored by the vrml and managed by it too well like i've i've seen like I, I I hope so. mm-hmm is that just like the thing that pops up on the splash page where it's the end of season tournament? Or... Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely gonna apply for a mod spot. Mm-hmm. That's gonna happen. Yeah, um, because <laughs> I'm stepping down as a mod and snapshot anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and just jump yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Pop on. It's all right. We don't need you. <laughs> we can, we can hey, handle it. <laughs> I'm doing it for the team, man. I'm doing. I'm stepping down as a mod for the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll this see. is gonna better us. Well, so I think we we can talk about in-game strategies for Pop One for all the people watching us. Building. Um, I think. What first? First, we can start with your style, your own style, playing the game, just individually. So. If I had to describe my style, it's aggressive up to a point. Um, I don't try to get in people's faces. I try not to as much as possible. Um, uh, and if I am in your face, I probably got a katana in my hand, and I, I kill so many people with katanas. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna push. I'm gonna push up to about mid range, and then I'm gonna start throwing builds down. 
I love when people start shooting at me because I'll start throwing, busy. you know, my walls down, um, climbing my walls, using them as cover. Um, I played with Shiva a few times. That's exactly what we did I, um, to get a respawn a few times. Like, I'll come over there, throw some walls down. Um, and I think that's going to be the biggest meta, and especially competitively, um, is going to be somebody on the team is going to get is going to be in charge of just getting so many building materials and their only job is going to build fortifications as their teammates come up and over and honestly yeah. as far as squad I mean, tactics as, as far as squad it's going to be me don't worry um, as far as squad <laughs> tactics go i think that's going to be the strongest way to go is you have one guy who's just dedicated to building um the loadouts you're going to want if you're if you're good with a sniper, and at least one person in your squad should be, um, whether it be the Saco or the Op, um, you're gonna want somebody good with at least one of those. Um, and then that guy should probably have an SMG. The other player, an AR, not the AK. The AK is mm -hmm. booty hole. They ruined um, it. Yeah, they did. The AK is done. It's not anything anymore. Yeah, um, I. I... I tried it many times after after the nerf, and it's gone. For me, the new AKM is the MP MP5. That's yeah. the new AK for me. The the MP5 actually, I've rocked so many people with that gun. Uh, but with the <laughs> low range, close range, doesn't matter. That's the best that. gun. The C. So the other guy, the other guy should have the CX and a 1911 or an SMG P90 preferably. Um, yeah. And his job is going to be being right up on those walls. As the builder's throwing them, he should be laying down fire over the wall. Um, and then I think the builder, you know, other than his build, if the builder can grab an LMG, um, Katana's going to be meta for everybody. Everybody should have one. Um, yeah. So an right. LMG. Yeah, an LMG yeah, yeah, just and removing. an SMG. Um, that should be what the builder has and all he focuses on. And nades. Yeah. Because grenades are so useful. What I like, uh, how we play with my with my Spanish squad, is we have one sniper in the back covering us and two yeah. flankers. And two guys rushing with with SMGs and, and the other guy covering us. And that's deadly. So the two rushers can build and, and rush the enemies. And you, they don't have time to run or think what to do. If the flank, the sniper is going to get them. And yeah. if they are just waiting, we are coming down to them. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would say as just far as like a general tactic, like or, or general play style for me um, is have the high ground. That's just, yes. that's just mm -hmm. the, the yeah. most important thing in this game. You have the ability to climb anything, so why are you not on top of something high? Soon Tzu says, have the high ground. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, well, it and definitely, like, definitely applies. And, and having positional awareness when you are in the high ground, because many times the, the sun comes to you and you have to jump, and if, you, if they get you in the air, you're dead. So you have yep. to always keep in mind where to jump from. Yeah, and well, you, that, that just you, comes with zone control and map control too. Like, because mm -hmm. what—that's why I generally don't like to hop drop—is because I want to be in the zone. I want to already be set up, and I want them to come to me. I do not want to be being yeah. chased by the storm. I want to—I want to be already set up in my high ground, in my sniper position, waiting for someone to come in, start picking them off when I know that they're already stressed by the zone, and I'm just chilling there, sitting, just like, okay, come at me, and I'm just laying yeah. into them. So I don't in have to. Position, I, I always ask one of the, my teammates to cover the back, and we just close them when the storm is coming, and they are running to us. Um, Run around and it, yeah. During the hot drop, things get messy often. So I only hot drop because I want kills. That's yeah. the only reason. But if we are competing, I will be more conservative during the during the mm -hmm. game. So. I, I'd probably take the drop, the, the pause. Yeah, I, I think that's the, I think that's what most people are going to do, regardless of what, unless for some reason kills are more important than wins, I don't think mm -hmm. that would end up happening, then yeah, people are just going to drop and immediately fight it out in the middle, but I, I predict we're just going to see all 18 pods going out, 
they're waiting for the initial zone to happen and then people are just going to start going towards it. Maybe go out a little bit yeah. more to avoid an early fight, grab what they need, and then start moving into that zone. Um, I'm sure if we could find some videos of like PUBG or Fortnite tournaments, uh, well, th those are a little bit different because they have that bus that goes over the middle and like you can basically pick anywhere in the map that you want to go and it's a much larger map too. Um, mm. But yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm hoping to see. I want to see six teams in like the final three zones just battling it out after like getting all the great gear that they can. Uh, I think that'll be more more fun to watch. But but we'll we'll see. I'm sure there are some people that are just like there's going to be some teams that are like, no, we are the hot droppers. We are going to kill anybody that comes near us, and you know I got to get that bloodlust because like that is a thing too. Is you build up your um your 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 kills, your 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 fighting ability in the game. I've definitely felt it before. But like yeah, I get momentum. Like okay, I got my first kill. I got my second kill. That's my first squad wipe. That's my second squad wipe. Let's just keep going, and you mm -hmm. got that momentum. And or some teams have, following yeah. people and yeah. could definitely happen. Some teams just literally watching where people go on the pods and then like dropping immediately next to them to get something and go try to wipe them early. Mm -hmm. Definitely be a strat there. Oh yeah, sneak up on them. That it, I would definitely be really sneaky. I like being mm -hmm. sneaky in these games. Like I remember you, when I was playing you, Fortnite, you can be a sneaky in this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if you're trying to be sneaky. No, it's totally possible to be sneaky. You're gonna dodge a window and it's gonna break. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So I will say no, we have hit the thirty like minute mark here. It, movement no. is super loud in the game. I will give it that. Like you can hear people from so far. Um, yeah. I love I love when players are running around and like looting and everything. And you're nearby, and you're like crouched behind something, and you're waiting, and you know exactly where everybody is because their footsteps are so damn loud. Yeah, so you're yeah, I, never, I never do that. I never wait. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, I'm always trying to rush them, and I die a lot. But every time I die, I make a shit ton of damage, so my team wipes them. <laughs> oh, For me. For me, what I like to wait for, because it's inevitable, a squad, as they're looting, always meet up together. I yeah. wait for that, because that's I always start my ambushes with a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I will say, uh, since we're kind of closing out on Pop 1 here, uh, definitely opening up the floor to any questions in chat. If anyone wants to ask us some questions for the next 30 minutes or so, and then we'll close out the podcast. Yeah. Right on. And yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Nick was saying something, but he cut out. What was that? I think, was. I think we're, we're, we're losing Nick there. Uh, I'm losing Nick. I don't know. Yeah, now, now, now it's working, I guess. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. you're good now. Yeah. Uh, first little question uh, from Albie Fonsier here. Uh, why the fuck won't Shiva get Twitter? <laughs> I have one, but I don't want you to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, buddy. Hey, that's the response to Albuquerque's question. <laughs> yeah, that was the response. That was the response from Mini Fox. Yeah, I do have one now, though. I, I I ended up having to make one just so nobody could take it. So you can uh, you can link it this time. It's just at Shiva Soldier. I think it is. I don't know. That's that's what the it let me take the name. So, but I'm not sure what the official like at name is mm -hmm. yet. Hopefully, no one has it, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like you know, all the people to have a, a Twitter account just to make to start this conversation about VR in Twitter, so we don't get, get more people involved. Oh yeah, I'm gonna so, follow Shiva. I'm totally gonna follow. Yeah, Shiva. I'm following I'm Shiva like, right you'll, now. Never, you'll never see anything in the feed. Actually, yeah, here, let me see if you can even find me. Hold on. Only give my way. Any other any other questions in <laughs> chat? Can we get? We didn't, have, we didn't have a ton of people in the stream like last time, so I don't know if we'll get too many questions here. We might have to pull out some new topics. Oh, I, I have a question for you all. So when you take a pause and you drop in whatever place in the map, uh -huh. what do you do? I, do you pick the first gun you find and go hunt the other team? Or just wait and loot? Nah, loot up, loot up till I get a gun I'm confident with and know I can go kill with. 
Wait, there is nothing left than a purple to touching my inventory. <laughs> <laughs> I, nothing I left. Get the first weapon and try to hunt the, the closest squad to us. But that's that's what we all do. So all three guys go go to hunt the other squad. And I I often get out, out of ammo <laughs> because of that. Well, yeah, that's well, a yeah, you don't so I, I like I'd rather loot. Yeah, I'd rather loot. Definitely choose a spot, loot up, get geared, group up, and then move out. Yeah, but how many kills have do you get doing that? Because I that's... still get up to nine a game easily doing that. Yeah, you get the kills later in the game. It, yeah. it forces everybody together. So, like, there's no reason to immediately go hunting for somebody. You meet the first two squads. <laughs> yeah, but then if that squad got more lucky with their loot and they're already juiced up, geared up, full shield, ammo out the oh, ass, up, then you're just getting lit yeah. up with nothing, no ammo, and you just die to that. How many times have you died doing that strat? Yeah, like, no, what's your success my, rate? My, <laughs> what's your success rate there? My, my, strategy, my, my strategy is just. I let them the loot and just kill them to get their loot. So I'm full, I'm full geared for the. But how many times have you died before you could get that first squad squad wipe in? Yeah. What if they found a purple? Purple. It, 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 one in two. <laughs> one every two games. <laughs> one every two. Okay, that's not enough for see, that's, <laughs> Africa. Better. See, that's that's why I. Uh... That's why I like landing at places like Cemetery or Summit or whatever, because I'll always be guaranteed having a couple of purples, and I'm mm, fine yeah. for the rest of the game. Well, like, that's why I would land in Cemetery most of the time, but what happened to it? It seems like they like completely moved oh, yeah. all the good stuff out of there. Like There used to always be a purple weapon at the top of the church, and now I'm lucky if yeah. there's a purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's all inside the church. It's They'll, they'll have like two to three purples in the church now. And then, so, like, so I think what the issue was is the way that the balance, the loot balance was in Cemetery, um, the church was always stocked full, but everywhere around it only had up to, like, a blue sitting around, um, which sucked. So now I think what they did was even out the amount of loot in Cemetery mm. as a whole. So, like, church doesn't give what it used to, but if you look around it, you'll find what you need. I see. Yeah. Well, I'll, I've jumped in a couple times, and church won't have a purple at all. But I'll look in the in the crypts around it, and I'll find purple everything. Yeah, I agree but with you there. It used to always be that, though. And, but I think, okay, could there have some? Could there have been some kind of, like, loot meta? Because the game came out in, like, October. So, like, was the cemetery, like, the meta spot where all the good loot was to, like, tie in with Halloween or something? Because I, it felt like after that, they added that that maze, right, uh, for, like, November. That's, like, harvest time, you know? So they, they added more stuff there. Do you think they're, like, shifting it, like, because of themes? Or are they really trying to balance the map load? So I can tell you now that they might be trying to shift themes um, only because Summit right now, uh, as of the new update today, it actually has, like, towers knocked down and stuff like that. So um, mm. it's around it not actually in summit but around it like there's towers and new obstacles and stuff so they might be changing focus over to the summit area since that actually goes with the storyline that they have set up for uh season one well, yeah, what, what, is the, 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 the yeah what is the storyline of sorts so essentially essentially what the storyline is is like it's from what I can gather, it's like a rebellion versus like an oppressive like state government or whatever. So like the 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 level one skin that you get from the battle pass is like the rebellion person. And then like the the level fifty brood armor is like the government like stand down, I'm gonna crush you guy. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Stand down or I'm gonna crush you. Like, are these people crush you so good? And the level one guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, are they gonna be what? Well, are, are they prisoners? Like, is this like the FBI? I don't know. I guess. Hunger Games. So if you look, <laughs> if you look, if you actually look through the tags, right, in like through the battle pass, 
some of the graffiti art, some of the calling cards, things like that will say like seek the truth. Um, and then some of them will like show the tower in the middle in like a government style propaganda, like poster deal. Mm. Yeah. Like, I, I so that's what know. I'm gathering. It's, it's kind of a rebellion deal, like a civil war yeah. type thing. Mm. I, I like they, they are making a backstory for the game. Even if it's uh, just a battle royale, we have yeah. just some backstory to play with. It, it makes it just that much character. more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah so that's what i've gathered from season one i'm actually looking forward to season two i am going to oh yeah by the way for anybody watching i did not earn my brood armor i bought it because i'm basic um so anyway <laughs> um, season two comes out i'm gonna buy it because i'm basic um and yeah so i can't wait to see what they have planned for season two though um uh, because i think they really nailed it with season one um the amount of content the amount of like the graffiti tags, I love that they added that. Um, the katana, that's so cool. I can't wait till they come out with skins for it. Um, mm -hmm. yes, and, and, like, like, I don't even think I've found a situation where I've been close enough to somebody to even try to use the katana. Like, does it actually work? Oh, yeah, you yeah. used to be able to yeah. hit people through walls yeah. with it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you could go up next to someone on the other end of the so, wall, you could just hit them through it and kill them. I did that a few times. So, I, I, I like it. it's a rough on top of them and, and two, two wipes with the katana they are dead dude mm -hmm. I've killed people in midair while I'm flying like yeah, you can do cool. some really cool stuff and, with the katana I, 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 I try to use the knife while it's dropping and that, that almost never works I hate the knife man she was too practical is to go oh, run at someone with a katana. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The oh, katana. Already, the katana, oh, the katana, katana I have a gun. The katana is fine, and and the shield is useful for even if you are trying to run from from a sniper, it's useful. Mm -hmm. But the knife is useless. You you have you need to get so close to someone, and you you don't have shield, so it, it's it's useless. Is it quite? Yeah. yeah because... Did you sneak up on somebody and just like. You, with the knife, you do have like a slightly that, faster that, movement speed, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a five. So the knife, the knife provides a five percent uh, movement speed uh, boost, yeah. and then the katana provides a ten percent movement speed boost, which ten percent is a lot. It's um, heavier, though. What? And dude, dude, the energy shield on the katana—that is one of my favorite things about it, man. You get into a house with somebody who only has an SMG or a shotgun. And you get that energy shield going, and you kneel down so it covers your entire body. Uh, you, just, and you just you just hold the katana top down, and and it covers your feet. Then I would just build a wall so they can't come at me. The climb oh, over the, the wall. Katana, the katana destroys walls fast. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. There's you know, no you can, counter. I, I'll, I'll try to use it, but I never go I, in houses most of the time unless I'm like passing through and looting, and I know nobody's in there. But yeah, right, yeah. I, but I'll try. Anyway, the katana, the katana is a risky move. You are not getting an experienced, experienced player with the katana. You, you yeah. only get PJ. Okay. Mm -hmm. That depends. That depends. If you can, you can get an experienced player, but you have to be really fast at switching your weapon. You, you yourself have to be oh, an experienced yeah. player. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Um, which is something I've actually been working on myself is like switching my guns as quickly as I can in, in like any situation. Um, and like I'm proud to say I have switched to the katana and killed some people and they were not PJs. They were Hatties. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'll, I'll try it out, but I feel like it's one of those high risk. Low to me. Yeah, low reward. Yeah. It, it totally, so, so I hate, here's the thing about the katana, and any, anybody who's watching, here's the thing about the katana. It is not a practical weapon to use. It is good for the movement speed to get away from the storm, things like that. The only time it is practical to use the katana is if the enemy player is dumb enough to get in your face, or if you just broke into a house and the other guy's got an SMG or a shotgun. Because in indoors, you're unstoppable with the katana. That thing's just done. Yeah. Like, you're done. Um, for, for, getting out, other... for getting out of the zone, it makes no sense. I just build two walls and fly over. Yeah, yeah I use the katana. I use the katana to move. It's fast. No, it's not faster but, uh, than, than flying. But you also... 
You build two walls and switch to the well, katana and fly. I don't. See, I don't climb use... that wall and come after you. Though. But see, but see, yeah. that's also the difference. That's also the difference in our play style as well. Is that I don't use builds unless I'm needing to defend myself. Mm, or I'm building a sky tower. Builder and Nuck is the offensive or like retreating builder. Right. Exactly. Okay. When I get shot at, like, I flip immediately to that side and I throw down a build. So, like, for Katana, it's just a simple A button push, throw a build down, and then I'm gone. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, see, that's the one thing I got to work on, because that, like, that's my least favorite part of the game. Uh, and same with Fortnite, too, because, like, I was, I was normally just playing the game without building at all. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. care for it. I just wanted to gunfight people. Uh, but now, like, when I played again today, like, people build so fast now. Like, it's gotten to that point, because yeah. I remember when Fortnite first came out, and I was I was actually pretty good at it, but I would hardly build. And now, everybody just knows how to build really quickly. They can build yeah. fortresses and run away. Like, this dude built, like, staggering, like, Z-pattern walls running away from me while I was trying to shoot him, and he got away, and I was so yeah. mad. I was like, God dang it, I had to. Let, let, let's, say that, let's say that we are in the middle of playing and if i get shot from i don't know where i i, I just insta build around me figure out where i i got shot from and uh, and refocus my my mm -hmm. my strategy so i think that's the most useful thing in the, in the game building and, right. and, well, and understanding the where it. and how Mm -hmm. the thing is even if someone is really good at building though they could throw up like a big build or cover themselves one zone grenade pushes them right out of their building though i do love those i pick up a zone grenade almost every yeah, time i say it because it's so yeah, useful. Yeah. they're so good for pushing yeah, people out of building them. pushing people out of structures it's, they're, you're the builder so Desi. <laughs> you don't like but, yeah use, you don't like I zone frags. grenades i love frags um i have i have done where like i'll i'll like jump or I'll go to the top of one of the windmills and, like, see squads going into, like, planes or whatever, jump off, and then as I'm flying, like, I get low and then start dropping nades like they're bombs. <laughs> <laughs> that gets killed. Nuglo's seen it. Nuglo mm -hmm. saw it with yeah, Annihilator. I did. Um, him and Annihilator were getting messed up by a squad, and so I came in and just dropped a couple nades, killed two of the dudes, and then dropped on the other dude and not, knocked him and read them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love to have frag grenades. Like, I, my, my setup will more than likely always be a zone grenade, a double stack of frag grenades, because I love that you can stack those now. Yeah. My main gun, a secondary gun, and then a heal. I think that's I think that's all it is now. They, did they get, Speaking I don't of heal. pop one clips, do you want to show Shiva's clip of the day real quick? Do a first clip of the day segment? From our from our games on... Yeah, show the, show the billboard. <laughs> that's one, the one you wanted to show, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. I think I had a squad wipe there. I had a grenade kill. Um... And help, yeah, Nuck had like he lost controller or he lost battery in his controller, so we had to go, we had to go save him. All right, so uh, just put this yeah. on the stream. Yep. This is uh, Shiva, Nuck, and Desi playing some Pop One. Uh, I think what was the squad wipe? Yeah. All righty, we'll show right here. I don't have. Are we to make it full screen? I made mean, full screen. Well, well I don't have to do it. Uh, oh, okay. No, okay. Yeah. Now I'm good. I'm good. It's not wanting to play. What have you done, Shiva? Take my new internet, no glow. I don't have any guns for a fucking fight yet. Good job, Shiva. Okay. 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 Now I'm good. I'm good. I'm good now. Shoot. I'm, I'm, possible. I'm gonna try to snipe. It just it doesn't, it doesn't want to show my target. skills, I guess. Uh, well, so go, to go back to your question on the real quick while we have time, uh, the reason I don't carry no, heals oh, is actually strategic. I don't see them yet. Oh, wait, I so, I love weapons. Tag for 87. Each weapon has it's the different. one that looks like you. Like, I always have to have an SMG. I always need an AR. If I can find an LMG, I'll take it. And then I always need a Stocko. They're pushing. So, that generally... Ah, yeah. oh, that bitch tagged me. Like, fills up. Fills up everything. Damn it. However, when I get kills, I always grab their heals because everybody else is always carrying a banana. Yeah. But like I pause the I video because like y'all start talking. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, because like I like healing in the middle of a battle. Like if if I'm getting like if I'm losing or like I just happen to get caught caught by somebody, like I will usually have the shield sodas and the heal sodas, and I'll I'll drink four of them really quickly. So I'm I'm healing as I'm engaging again and fighting back. Uh, so yeah. that, that's my strategy. 
Oh, yeah. No glow. Straight to the video. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta switch your screen. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Do we want to keep watching, keep playing the clip, or are we going back? To oh, okay, yeah, okay. play the clip. Let's finish it. Alright, I just set up a new thing too. I can't see him. Technical difficulties. Maybe don't play it at the, <laughs> maybe don't play it at 1080. Yeah, I, I think I'm trying to find him. Now. I see him. In that clip, my controller got disconnected because I, I, I heard him. My skin in lab, and oh. I, I lost my battery. Uh, I opened just the controller. Got him. I needed him. Oh my god. <laughs> That's all that it's worth. Like, cause like I used to have a ceiling lamp above me when I was playing VR, and like I definitely smacked the hat a couple the other of times. One. I have to get rid of it. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Just replace it. Like you know. Mm -hmm. I actually I might actually. Do. I already had to replace okay. some light fixtures nice. in this house. We just I got them. Keep your gun up. And yeah, uh, we've got. Uh, I've got some really cool light fixtures. Oh yeah, good. Like, the, the yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I might get rid go get, of the Go get stuff here. Here's a soda drink. Now. If like if I want to play in that like right next to the modem, if I'm playing on my Quest 2, I might do that. I'm pretty good about not hitting, hitting the ceiling fan though. But it, it's that risk is always <laughs> there. If I get if I get way too immersed and I'm way too into it, especially in Pop One, because like most of the time, if I'm playing like contractors or something, I'm not like I don't have my hands really high. The yeah, only, but when you're climbing, <laughs> yeah, that's the definitely when mm -hmm. I've hit something. I've I've definitely hit this duct. I don't I don't think you can see it, but I've got like this duct system in this basement. Uh, so it's lower than my ceiling. I've scratched mm. the crap out of that a bunch of times. <laughs> I have uh, this wall right uh, here. I've this little pillar thing right here i've hit a few times <laughs> yeah so do you guys do you guys climb or throw throw i mean like you're throwing yeah. yourself up the wall yeah, yeah. throwing all, all yeah. the yeah. time yeah of course. that's so much faster I've if you people, normal climb i've seen people monkey it up and it's pretty yeah. crazy how fast some people can do it yeah, and then yeah, and then you're like, like you know you can just throw yourself and they realize how how they've been doing it wrong and they get so like, mad. Oh, <laughs> like, oh. That's a waste of energy. Well, it was like, yeah, you, you see me in the in the clip. I start out like just one handed, like throwing myself up the. Yeah, that's how <laughs> yeah. that's how I climb is always one handed. But yeah, because like, then you can have a gun out of there already. I've always got a gun out and I've always going one handed. It depends. If it's yeah. not critical, I, I will put my gun in. I, I also red, redirect the climbing and get to other areas. Yeah. Y'all ever use the jump glitch walls I, around? I think that, that, that's the way you, you have to climb in this game to get good. If you're climbing too hard, you're, you are not shooting quick if you, if you get surprised. All right, so do they well, patch the yeah. jump but glitch yet? No, I just saw someone do it on like this. Like where that tower fell over, um, there's like a little like bar sticking out and you can you can do the the chest yeah. clip on that so yeah, that is a, that is a fun strat <laughs> that's gonna be hard to like really fully patch i'll bet the vrml uh, yeah. the vrml uh if they take it if they take the game over and that becomes a complaint they'll probably make a rule just to, well there already are rules specifically geared towards that kind of thing because mm -hmm. technically somebody it could ex argue exploitation yeah, yeah if you use a glitch for, to take advantage, that, that should be banned, and yeah. that goes to every single game in the VRML. Yeah, yeah. There's no way that, that'll that'll be a thing that that will become a thing. Somebody will try to use the glitch. Their team will get like yeah. And there is, there is another glitch when you get close to a to a wall and you open the Oculus menu, you can move your head through the wall and watch to the other side. And oh, wow. the, the, well, the the enemy the enemy don't see you. Yeah, no, that, well, that's for yeah. some place manipulation, which is like that's just like a general. That's a big no no. <laughs> yeah, that's every game too. Yeah, there's yeah. no way to <laughs> allow that now. I'm giving away my tricks here. <laughs> oh, you use them? I see. Oh, I see. No, no, no. no. that's how you get such a high win rate, huh? <laughs> I don't use that glitch, and neither the the flying glitch. Because... Yeah. <laughs> First, because I don't like to fly high. Because if you get if you get shot, you're dead. I yeah, use it to quickly sure. get up the tower, though. On yeah, one I know. Of those, uh, telephone poles, get up on the tower real quick. That's not happening. If the other guy is a good shooter, even if you try to strafe and move randomly in the air, you're dead. Yeah, I've definitely dodge stuff. It's it's possible. Yeah. You just yeah, but. Drop, drop, you gotta you gotta commit the bird strategy. Yeah. We're constantly going in and out of the wing glider, <laughs> dodge amount. Uh, that's what that's the legit strat though, because I use yeah. that 
legitimate strategy. Yeah. So our, it's an arm workout to do that, though. It's like arms out, arms yeah, out, arms in, arms out, arms in, arms out, arms in. VR in general is just one of the toughest arm workouts, though. <laughs> Especially yeah, playing hours on it. Yeah, that's like, why I love this game so much, is because it's a shooter, A, but I also, I rock climbed for a really long time. Like and so... Like climbing, like having that put in VR, like a really intuitive climbing game. Uh, I knew I was going to do well at it because I, yeah, it was just like bouldering in like a gym. Like you know, you just climb up 15 feet and jump off. But it's a really good workout. Like yeah, I've got really strong hands now from it. Uh, so it, it's, to me, like this is never really a workout. I don't think I could ever work like play this enough so that it would hurt my arms or give me a burn like an actual workout yeah. so you'll have an advantage if you actually just go work out go climb go shooting like you'll get that grip strength and arm strength and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you, you don't have to like you have your workout elsewhere so that you don't have to worry about it when you're playing you're in a competitive environment because uh that's like what we talked about last week like when you when you have conditioning and like you you train your body to be in tense situations all the time when you're in that competitive environment you're used to it and you're you're more in control mm -hmm. uh so you'll you'll win <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that, I, I think you you have to be in really bad shape to to get tired of playing in vr mm -hmm. even uh, with, with the game at, at least in, in beat saber you can you can, yeah, actually. But and Gorilla Tag. Gorilla Tag is brutal oh, oh. on the arms. I never played Gorilla yeah. Tag. That seems like it would be a good one. Like, because you're, you're just but, constantly. That's the way it's. I put about like 20 hours in, and it, I, my arms are a little bit sore after playing that. It gets tired. You, yeah. you, but, but you want a good workout. Gorilla the fight on hard. And, like, just go through that, the campaign. The what? Thrill of the fight. Oh, Thrill of the fight. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On hard and do the campaign, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or realistic, do the realistic. Yeah, like, the boxing game is good too. Yeah. VR, VR has a, is a good cardio training, but mm -hmm. you are trying to get the strength or something like that. It, it, I think it, it, there is a better training for for that. Oh yeah, then you go to the gym for that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or using weights in, in you. <laughs> yeah, you can get like yeah. weighted. No, and stuff. Not a good idea for the. By the way. If you are trying to to play shooters with weights here, I'll do that. You are no. With your age. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I was doing that, I if I was using weights, it'd be like in because I also compete in the fighting championships and stuff like that. That's what it would be. Is like I'd I'd either be training in drill of the fight or VFC, and like use them for that because that just would feel good. Like. Maybe well because you're well because you're actually trying to have a repetitive motion, uh, and you're trying to strengthen that and quicken that. Whereas with shooting, you need you need to just be in control. Mm -hmm. So right, exactly, you're not you're not making a quick movement anywhere. You're the, the it would be your pull up, but yeah, yeah it would be depending on the game. If, you, if, you, if you if you have weights in your hands and you try to get you're your, gonna go up, you're just gonna go to the ceiling. Quick. Yeah, yeah and you get rid of the weight, you are going this way. You you are going up, and you, you have to correct that. three times to to get the good shot. You yeah. could use a weighted vest in VR. I do do that. I have a fifty pound weight vest, and I would when I was big into onward, I would put that on. But God, that just gets so, <laughs> it gets that like, sounds <laughs> brutal. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we should definitely get all four of us on Gorilla Tag. I feel like that'd be a good time. Is that free? I am yeah. not playing that it's, game. It's free. Oh, come on, Desi. Come I can't, on. I can't. I can't, man. I'm going to end up punching one of my kids. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. That's fair. That's, that's, that's just uh, just it's you know, uh, it's free on App Lab now. <laughs> you, you see this, this drawer behind me? <laughs> yeah. It, it's all market for, for play, from playing onward. I'm throwing Nate. <laughs> like, I've hit this I, chair multiple I, times. I don't use a ton of utils and contactors because I'm afraid of hitting my kids. That's why I became a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We'll, we'll throw it out. I, oh. I am one of those VR parents that has domed my child. One of my mods <laughs> on my channel is actually in the chat, and he told me a story once of he actually nailed his kid in the head while playing Echo. Oh, he got yeah, a, he got a stern talking to from his wife from that one. <laughs> 
I stopped yeah. playing Echo. I stopped playing Echo because I broke my knuckle because I waylaid my wall. <laughs> <laughs> VR like, is a dangerous sport. <laughs> time because I was showing her VR. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think we all we all have have a scar of from hitting things in VR. You, mm-hmm. you can't consider yourself a pro player unless you've got scars from VR. Oh, That's yes, cool. yes. Oh, man. I got one right here. Yeah, exactly. I have one like, on it's my, always on the hands. On my, yeah, your hands are just the worst. Luckily with Knuckles, you got this big top part here that goes like this. That kind of protects it if you hit certain ways, but I've smashed my Knuckles so many times. Yeah. What, what I liked was the old TV one. I know. I, I miss those so much. Yeah. These are I mean, indestructible, and um, you can hit everything. <laughs> oh yeah, I, there, I've waxed the crap there, out of them, and they still work. I was there, there is a metal ring, and this this thing is you can destroy this. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think they they moved away from that for the Quest One. It was definitely not as durable, and so I was kind of disappointed. Yeah. I never had. Well, I do have one, but uh, no, yeah, it's uh, not. Actually, for for Quest Two, you can you can move the ring, so I, I don't really want to to hit that so uh, hard. Yeah, I'm definitely lucky I haven't broken it because I for sure have hit that duct. <laughs> before yeah. throwing you till in uh, in contractors. So. I there's I have this. I don't know if I can show it. This right here this light fixture sits right above my setup and on the other side of it there's actual black paint from my index controllers on it due to how many times <laughs> i have smacked it and hit it but i will that's also say we really have hit an hour so we yeah, have really really one. playing echo you try to jump many times and you hit the ceiling oh yeah because i can't I jump anymore because i have jump. I'm scared from anything. I have a, a low ceiling in my living room, and I, I hit the ceiling so many times playing Echo. I, I, I can play Echo in that room. Right. Yeah. Anyways, Desi's got right. to go do family stuff now, so I'm yes. going to catch you all later. All righty. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I think wrap it up. I think the hour is over. Yeah, we've hit it. Yeah, it is over. So I'm going to be a family guy now, and I'll see you guys later. Pet family guy. All right. See you, Desi. Okay. Yeah, that's it.